Oh, Lord, thank you. To start off, a uh, great win. I think we needed it the way uh, we achieved it, the way we attained it. It was great. Let's make point of the second half. I think the defense played phenomenally well. Second half, all the kids were in shape. We didn't uh, look like we were exhausted, tired. Uh, thank God for our conditioning. Penalties did a great job on that as well as the team as a whole. Specialists performed well as expected. And uh, overall, thank God for the W. Fresh, freshman impact started uh, two true freshmen on offense in season opener. For the first time in school history, Dre Lawn and Jordan. Uh, also, Micah Hood, specialist, was Hood, another richer freshman, Taji McCoy. TV ratings, 4.8 million viewers, peaked at 5.6 million. That lets you know that uh, our fan base is real. Fan base is real, and whether you like it or not, you want to see it. And I'm thankful for, I feel as though we have one of the best, if not the best fan base in the country. Highest uh, increase, over 49%, last seven seasons. Big 12, um, Shador, the company with Patrick Mahomes, the last 20 years, 400 passing yards, four touchdowns, back-to-back -back season over. Jimmy Horn was phenomenal. Phenomenal, 198 yards. I'm upset that I didn't know because we'd have got him 200. But if he had caught the ball on that one, he probably would have had 260. <laughs> I love my Jimmy, man. Everything about him. God, I love him. Travis Hunter is Travis. Uh, 131 snaps. Showed no signs of tiring. He is who he is. He is the definition of him. Uh, 31 NFL scouts represented 19 teams on Thursday. Uh, most scouts in attendance to see you history. And our man, Xavier Weaver, made the 53 man roster, and that's not an easy task, especially with the condition that he suffered at the conclusion of the season, man. So I'm proud of him. Let's go. Hey, Brian. Hey, Coach. Brian Allen, we'll with the camera. Okay, I don't, I don't mind, Brian. Can we start off from now on with one of the ladies? It's just being gentleman like. Yeah. You could go then, but from now on, we're going to start off with one of the ladies. Let's go. Let's start now. There you go. Uh, Nick Yetter, Cedar Point Horizon coach. How you doing? Um, grass the week. Yes. Rivalry. Yeah. Last year was a lot of hype. Excited. It's always a lot of hype. Yeah. You're going to Lincoln this this year. How personal is this matchup? Well, first of all, um, I have a ton of respect for Matt Rule. Um, he's in. I call it our class of coaches. We all, you know, took on a tremendous test that year along with uh, Coach Dillingham and several others. So I feel like we're a fraternity. So I root for that class of head coaches that came in that year. Um, pro, um, he was a professional, did a phenomenal job, maybe not the job that he aspired to do, but he has a ton of experience and I love what he's accomplished in his college uh, coaching career. So I look for them to be physically tough and posing, uh, and try to run the football. They have a freshman quarterback that had a pretty good day last week, but we got to do what we do. We got to go in there and do what we're capable of doing. And I think we showed the glimpses of that in the second half of our first game against a formidable opponent. Hey, coach. Uh, so a lot of times coaches will say that the most improvement stays from that first game to second game. Uh, I'm curious if you believe that first off. I, I don't know who said that. Okay. A lot of people say that, but uh, who? It is written. It is written. Yeah, written. I don't know where that said. I don't know. Where. Anyway, my question would be: as you watch the film of mm -hmm. last week, what are some of the biggest things that this team needs to improve upon from last week? Well, I think we improved them on in the second half. I think we corrected a lot of things in the second half. We were able to contain the run a lot better, uh, play solid gap control. Chidozi did a phenomenal job up front. Linebackers got to point of contact and they made the plays and I think the secondary is pretty darn good. We just got to uh, not give up short and short passes that we, we just got to be a lot more physical, a lot more on point and understand uh, down in distance. Hey coach, I noticed you brought the whole team to the Stampede on Friday night and then yeah. the whole team on the sideline or I guess on Wednesday and then the whole team on the sideline on mm -hmm. Thursday. What was the thought process behind that? I wanted to bless them. The whole team has been doing a phenomenal job of preparing one another, all for one, one for all. And I love them, the walk-ons, the, you know, the, the guys that, the, the OBs, the original buffs, 
all everyone, man, they've done a wonderful job. So I just wanted to reward them. I don't know if we're going to continue that because that sideline is really small and it gets crowded and we try to go over everything, the significance of you guys over here, you guys over there. And we go back and we see guys everywhere. So it's, it's kind of tough because you don't want to get upset at just people standing around. You really want them to use them in some capacity, but it's tough when you have a short sideline like that. But I wanted to bless them. They deserved it. There she go. Um, well, we always start off with a morning message that kind of directs their path to where they should go. It could come from another team or what transpired. And it's a lot of situations that Coach Pollock um, places up on the big screen to let us know what happens if this. If we block a punt and it goes past the line of scrimmage, we want to prepare our guys in all aspects of the game. But the mental part of it, we may stop practice right in the middle, middle and put them on the line and condition them and try to fatigue them a little bit to see how they respond then right after they're fatiguing. So it's a lot of things that could occur in a game. Sudden changes. Now you just throw the offense or the defense out there. We prepare our butts off for anything that could possibly happen um, in the midst of a game. Troy, go ahead. Coach, how are you? How are you doing, sir? Good. Troy Freeman, Senior Sports Report. I've got two for you. First, Dylan Rattle is making a second start. Does yeah. playing an inexperienced quarterback change the way that you want to kind of attack? Um, you, you, you attack weakness, weaknesses. Um, I don't know if you attack inexperience. If that's a weakness, so be it. But the kid made some darn good throws, some pretty good plays. Um, they did some consistent things that we knew they would do uh, within their offense. A phenomenal game. I mean, it started out, you know, back and forth a little bit, but they went ahead and, and did what they needed to do. But I, I love what he showed um, in this first college game ever. I love what he showed. And then my second one, do you do anything special in practice this week to prepare for the atmosphere of the crowd? Yeah, yeah, we started that today. Most definitely. Great question. John Lewis. Hey, Coach, John Street is speaking with you. How you doing, sir? Doing well. Beyond your game plan, how much do you appreciate how much this means to the fan bases, not just now, but for generations, this rivalry? I can't speak for generations, my man. I'm just happy and thankful that we are here right now and we're going to dominate the day as best that we can. But it's been things passed along and passed down from older generations to now that uh, the governor um, got up in the meeting today and he took the floor and he allowed us to know some things about this rivalry and some things that should impact us uh, just passionately about this rivalry. Um, I'm pretty sure you're not going to see anybody on the team wing red anywhere this week because he politely uh, allowed us to know that's a no-no. So. I love it. Uh, I think that's what college football is all about, whether we're in the same <coughs> conferences or not. But this is a tremendous rivalry, and I look forward to it. Hey, Coach. Uh, Jason Jones, Sports Illustrated. Just picked up on something, and I'd love to give you a chance to comment on it. Give me a uh, chance to comment on it. Here, here comes the big one. Yeah, no, no, you'll like this. Okay. Uh, going from last year to this year, yes, it sir. seems like starting with the offensive line. Yes, sir. And now, recently, seeing Shador and Travis kind of go at it. Uh, go at it. Which way? Uh, Shador was giving Travis some stuff about how he ran a route. Well, that, that's ago. how they interact. Yeah. Yeah. Is, is there something to be said about your players self-governing themselves more so this year instead of waiting for coaches to do it? Well, these young men, uh, they got love for one another. That's number one. Number two is they bonded tremendously. They're depending on upon one another. And the majority of these guys, even the two that you mentioned, they have plans to go and pro. So they really want to take it up a notch, and they're going to really hold each other accountable. Um, it's a lot more goes on than that in the huddle and on the sideline. So it, it's phenomenal. But they, they're at each other all the time, those two. And they have this uh, silent chemistry. And it started way back in Jackson that – that you could uh, – the last game that we played on the last drive, it barely was any play call. It was just signals between those two, and they put on the show. Hi, Coach. Ryan Stoll from Rob's Report. So, I mean, the offensive line played pretty well on Thursday, only allowed one sack, and I'm mm -hmm. sure you've gotten a chance to go back, watch the tape. Right. What are you seeing from that group? 
and should he expect that same level of play? Well, that has a lot to do with the quarterback and getting the ball out of there and, and understand what's coming, what the defense presents, and checking us and putting us in the right situation. It has a lot to do with that as well. Oftentimes, it may look like the line, but sometimes it's not the line. It's something that we did wrong. Um, those guys uh, have a tremendous relationship with one another as well. They hold each other tremendously accountable. I feel like they have one of the best offensive line coaches in the country in Phil. And uh, these guys really want to play the game. They love to play the game of football, as well as the defensive line guys. I mean, you're, you're talking like about similarities, the way they approach the game, the way they've been fighting each other for a darn month and a half now, you know, trying to get ready for this, this, these, this journey that we're about to embark on. But I love what I'm seeing, man. You know, I just wish we could turn it up, be a lot more physical on the run, um, demand that um, we dominate our assignment on that particular play so that we can consistently run because we have several backs that can flat out do it and I can't wait to you guys get to see the best of them. But we got to take what the opposing defenses give us. And uh, they were vulnerable regarding the pass a week ago. So we had to do what we had to do. How you doing, sir? Yeah. And the NBA scored that late touchdown. Yeah. How likely are we to see Michael this weekend? How similar or different do you think the running back touches are going to be for these guys? Um, the game kind of dictates that, and situations dictate that. We know which backs are good at this, are good at that, are not good at this. Um, the main thing about the youngsters, pass protection. You, you got to make sure, because Shador's doing a lot of checking off up there, and you got to make sure they're ready to protect. And, uh, we know Michael can run his butt off. He's, he, he is physical. He's abrasive. He's abusive. He is unbelievable uh, with the ball in his hands. And we hope that uh, we could get that. But we have several backs that can do that, man. And we're hoping that we could run the ball a lot more successfully. Coach, how much does Dante on the camp tell us right now? He's doing yeah, he's doing well. He's doing well. I think uh, he may be cleared tomorrow. Uh, we're praying so because he's uh, one of the bona fide leaders of the defense leaders on the team and his passion is second to none. He's second to none, uh, the way he plays the game. And when he goes down, it's definitely a deficit in our secondary as well as on our defense. But he's the communicator. Um, he and Shiloh, but he's even more of a communicator than Shiloh is at some point. Yeah, if I got to put a follow-up Yes, sir. Savion Riley came in, I thought, played pretty well. Yeah. Uh, what did you think of how Savion stepped in? That well, game? we all got work to do. Uh, I, I certainly have work to do. So Savion has work to do, but he came in and uh, he did something that he didn't prepare for. Uh, he didn't prepare to be the down safety. He's really the free, you know, with Shallow. But uh, we felt better about going on with uh, Savion in there. And he stood up to the test. So we're proud of him. So now he prepares for both because you never know. But thank God we got that kind of depth that, that we – I'm not going to say we didn't miss a beat because Cam is phenomenal, but Savion did a great job. Jack, how you doing, sir? Good, good. How are you? Good. Um, Martin, let's go back to you mentioned the true freshman getting playing time. Early. Yes, sir. <coughs> we saw Draylon get a couple touches early. Mm -hmm. How much of a priority is that for your staff to get some of those freshmen? Maybe I, I don't think it's a priority. I think it's it's how the game is laid out. Like, we, we kind of play the game before we play the game. So when you're – game planning plays and you go to an empty package because Draylon is just like a running back as well. You got to understand. So the opposing team may not change personnel because he's just like a running back and that gives you an advantage if you're in man and they motion him out and he's a receiver on a linebacker. That's going to be a problem. So we, the guy's got to earn it, man. We don't just throw you out there just because you're a freshman. If you earn it, you're going to get opportunities to play. How you doing, sir? Well, I think the best coordinators, as they have a tremendous relationship with their quarterbacks, and they kind of get together week of and what you like, what you don't like. Um, let's take that out. Why do you like this? Why not this? 
and you kind of come up with it collectively. It's not just the Shador thing. It's not just the Pat thing. It's not just the my thing. You know, I may say, I like this. I, I see a hole in this play right here where they go cover four in this, and we're on this hash. Let's, you know, it's certain things you may do, but if it don't work at practice, then certainly we don't feel like it's going to work in the game. But he has a tremendous uh, luxury to change plays at the line of scrimmage and what he sees. But you got to take into uh, account that this kid has started every game in his high school career. This kid has started every game in his college career, but one, he's seen a lot of football. So it's not too many complex defenses that you can throw at him that he hadn't seen. He's seen all of them. And now you add in Pat in his ear until 15 seconds on the clock. That's phenomenal. So now you take, you call a play, watch the weak side blitz. You know, Shador, they're probably coming off the edge. And you're good. Then, you, then you're quiet and you just let him do what he does. That's the luxury of having a sort of a veteran quarterback that has seen the game a lot. What I think, we wore him. That's what I think. <laughs> I wanna, we wouldn't have worn him if I didn't love him. I love him. Yeah, I, love, I love him. I'm going to give Smitty all that credit. Smitty did a phenomenal job. Yeah. You guys look really good. They look really good here. Take a couple more. Go ahead. Coach, Bill Rowe with Scobo Sports. Um, after the game, what was it like with your coaching staff? You mentioned a lot about them and how much they helped you out. Yeah. Do you understand the relationship with the coaches? Yes. Yes. Um, they're excited. You got to understand uh, quite a few of them. This was their first time in the college game. So they had never been on the sidelines coaching in a college game. They've been in the NFL. So it was phenomenal for them. But you know, after the game, everybody just dispersed and go their separate ways because you got kids, you got family, you got everybody in town that you're trying to entertain and you're just trying to put an exclamation park at the end of the sentence. But overall, everybody had a great time. It was challenging. You know, you got to believe what you see. And sometimes you want so much for these kids, and they may not do what you want them to do, but you got to believe what you see and uh, go with it. Go with what you saw so it won't uh, damage us in the long run. But overall, we're excited about especially what they did in the second half. Hey, Coach, you spent all winter, all spring, all summer building the team, figuring out visualization, mm -hmm. knowing what's coming. How much for you is taken out of evaluating Tape versus what you saw in practice, and did anything surprise oh, you? Oh, great questions. Great, great question. Normally, what you see in practice is what you're going to see in the game. It's very rarely do a kid practice like garbage and get opportunity to play like garbage in the game. Or we, we, it's up to us. We can't put them in that situation. We have to put these kids in a situation to succeed. That that what constitutes a really good coach, and we're trying our best. Um, we got a lot of talent, we feel. We have guys that are very versatile. We just got to make sure they're in their capacity that they could be successful. And we can't put them out there in any other capacity. The other one was that also applies to coaches staff, right? Too, right? I mean, right. Was, you made a lot of changes. How did you feel they handled the responsibilities awesome. and then came back to the table after evaluating the uh, Awesome. I mean, it's not, it wasn't just that game, it's the preparation and through the course of the spring as well as fall camp, you, you, you kind of look and you know what you got. It, it's not a surprise that's going to be to thou during the season. It's not a surprise. You, you, you kind of knew this jack of the box is in there. It's going to pop up, okay, with the right amount of pressure. And when things start to turn, you know, it's going to pop up. So. I, I love the staff, man. I love their not just experience of football, but their experience in life with men and young men. I love the way they handle certain situations. I really do. Um, that's why I love pros, man. And those guys are professional. They're handling these young men like they're professional. And we tell these guys every day, um, 31 scouts there. We had, I think, several scouts at practice today. And that's an everyday thing. How could you not want this? How can you not want to be a part of this? How can you not want to perform for this? If you say you want to go to the NFL and you got guys out here every day that can make that happen, what else do you want in life? So that's what we are. And I'm, I'm proud of the coaching staff as well as the young men and the support staff. Thanks, Coach. Thank you all. God bless. Thank you, Coach. All of you. God bless.